Hey, what's up guys? Today I am starting the process of building these custom gates for this eight inch overhead entryway that I've been working on. This is gonna be one solid piece, two and seven eighths. And I'm gonna coat each one of these to the proper angle. If you haven't seen the first few videos of this project, we will link them in the description below. So the first thing I like to think about when building custom gates, first of all, I would normally want to have the entryway already in. As of today, when I'm starting this project, it's not already in. Normally I like to have it in so I can actually go get hard measurements because just because you're supposed to have a 24 foot opening doesn't always mean you'll end up with a 24 foot opening. But since I've already built the entryway and laid it out and having a 24 foot opening, I feel comfortable with starting these gates, if that makes sense. So the first thing I like to do is decide how big my hinges are gonna be and how big of space I want in between them. If I'm going to have two gates, like in this case, we're gonna do two 12 foot gates. What I mean by that is what I've done here was I marked three inches. So I plan on having a three inch piece of flat for my hinge. So I'm gonna have a hinge on one side and a hinge on the other. So that's six inches that I need to take away from my gate length. And then I wanna have two inches in between the two gates. And these could all fluctuate because I'm gonna be putting these hinges right here on the gate. So, and I could really include this in my takeaways here, but I'm just saying, if you don't sometimes, like three inches, that's three inches from here. I'm gonna, put a, I'm gonna be welding a piece of plate right here. Well, there's still a quarter inch here, so technically I need three and a quarter times two, which is six and a half. So that's a whole extra half an inch that I haven't taken away here. So if I wouldn't have thought about this hinge right here, I may not have two inches here I may only have an inch and a half because I didn't consider this quarter inch. The only reason I'm explaining all this is to keep in mind to account for everything that's going to be taking away space in your gate opening. That is my ultimate goal here. So um, now there's always the case of, there's always the, you know, this piece of flat that I'm putting on here. Yeah, I'm considering putting it three inches, but if for some reason my gates were touching, I could always trim off an inch off my flat. As long as whatever you're, whatever you're mounting your gates to, like if you need them to swing around a certain way or a certain distance, you wanna make sure you have this long enough to where it's gonna reach or go fold back or whatever you need that gate to do, you wanna make sure that's, that's long enough, I guess is what I'm saying. So what I've come up with is eight inches. So I took, that's like what I'm gonna be taking away from 24 feet. So to figure out how many uh, inches are in 24 feet, 24 times 12, 12 inches in a foot, 288 inches is our opening, but I'm gonna take away minus eight inches, 280, and since we're doing two gates, I'm gonna divide that by two, and that gives us 140, and I've got 140 OD for each gate wrote down here. But I did not consider this quarter inch here, so I could always, do 139 which I probably will do 139 and 3 quarter OD so now let's draw the style of gate that we're going to be building so I'm going to be building the gate out of 2 and 3 eighths pipe and 2 and 7 eighths pipe I'm going to have a piece of 2 and 7 eighths about about 6 or 7 feet tall uh, possibly with a dome cap I do not know yet but I cannot forget to slide these hinges over that. I need two hinges in there. But anyway, because that is a common mistake, forgetting that. So that's going to be roughly six to seven foot tall. I haven't decided yet. And then from outside to, not the outside of my hinge, but the outside of my gate here, we want 139 inches. 
This is two and three eighths down here. I'm gonna have five runs. One, two, three, four, five. Already misproportioned because this is gonna be sticking up past our last run. So, do, 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 do. so much fun drawing. Do, do, do. All right. And then over here, it's gonna be about roughly four foot from here to here. Four or five. Yeah, probably around four, maybe 50 inches. Maybe 50 inches. But then this is gonna be a piece of two and seven eighths down here also. So we got two and seven eighths. This sticking up past a couple feet, two or three feet. And then from there, we're gonna be putting a piece of two and seven eighths right here. So we got two and seven eighths, two and seven eighths, two and seven eighths and five runs of two and three eighths. Now, you might be asking, are you actually going to put this in the same plane? Yes, so that means we'll have a cope. This piece is gonna be coped, this one's gonna be coped. This is gonna be one solid piece, two and seven eighths. Then I'm gonna cope each one of these to the proper angle. And then cope these to tie it all in down good right here. So that's gonna be the tricky part, but I am super excited about this project. I love custom projects. I love out of the ordinary. I think it's neat. I think it's a little more challenging. It forces you to take your time and that's how you get quality work is by taking your time and planning out. Doing exactly what I'm doing here, planning. Planning, 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 because I do not want to make a mistake. Because you either spend your time planning with way less of a chance to make a mistake or you hurry and you make a mistake, so then you spend your time fixing your mistake. And even though you can learn from mistakes, we try not to make them, right? So that's my goal, quality work and plan. So that's the plan for the gate. So this here is something that I learned at that fab shop right after high school. For those of you who don't know, I worked in a steel supply shop. It's called Stillwater Steel there in Stillwater, Oklahoma, uh, right after welding school, right after high school. And a guy named Bobby Flores taught me this right here. He taught me a bunch whenever I worked there, but he taught me to lay things out on the concrete with your chalk, chalk line, soapstone, whatever, because you can figure out your angles and stuff by doing this. And it helped a bunch on this project. A Ross welding CAD, baby. Here's what we got so far. I decided to overlap it four inches here. I will probably just put a flat cap here, but up there I will probably put a, like a regular fence post cap and sand both welds down. Same down here, four inches overlap, four inches overlap up here. Uh, just like the, uh, let's see, leaves are in our picture here. Just like the picture, four inches overlap. Looking good so far. I didn't end up using my chop saw because this two and seven eighths I'm using is good thickness there. It's pretty heavy and they're almost 30 foot joints. It was just too heavy. It wasn't worth my while to put it in there since I'm going to be capping and sanding down anyway. I just torch cut it. I just set it up on some stands here and then uh, just use my saddle marker to put a straight line and cut it with the torch. The next thing I'm gonna do, I think, is the long horizontal piece from this corner here, all the way up to right there where that green spot is. That piece will be two and seven eighths also. That'll be the last piece of two and seven eighths. Everything else will be two and three eighths. But I wanna go ahead and get that piece fitting good, tack it in there, and then I can start cutting all my short pieces I'm pointing at the drawing on the floor now. All the, uh, I say short pieces, they're all different lengths, but they will all have the same, luckily should all be the same angle, but it'll actually, it'll actually look like this, just like the six inch 
It probably won't be much, actually. Probably be like this. Ain't gonna be much at all, I don't think. It'll be saddled this way, but also at this same angle right here. Yeah, buddy. Very fun project. Very, very fun. I love it. I was a little premature on this one. I wasn't sure. Whenever I cut this, I even got an argument with myself right here on which one I wanted to put in first. But I mean, it's all right. It won't go to waste, but see. I was going to do this one first and then cope this two and seven eighths right here into that. But that doesn't make sense because the two and seven eighths is bigger. So I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to cope this one. Two and seven eighths, two and seven eighths. And then I'm going to have to notch this one here. Saddle this two and seven eighths. I mean two and three eighths into this two and seven eighths. So anyway, I've took a measurement from here, the longest point of this piece here, all the way to the shortest point. And I believe since these two ends of my gates are parallel, I believe these should be the same angles right here. If my experience serves me correctly. It should be the same angle so I should be able to take a measurement from long to short and then that should be my measurement but now I'm fixing to find the angle. I do have this electric angle finder but uh, my, my go-to is always this guy here but I'm gonna do both both in this situation just to kind of check myself if you will. Let's take a look see. So we've got What appears to be 60, 63. Okay. Look at there, ladies and gents. 62.6, almost 63. So we got 63 right there. A 90 would be right here, which would be, if this was straight across, a 90. But we want to put a, so 90 minus 63 is what? 90 minus 63 is, let's do some old school math. 8, 10, be 7, 27. And to get that angle, I am going to use the chop saw. So we'll come on over here. So pretend there's a piece of pipe in here. This is a 90 degree cut and we want to turn it 27 degrees. 20, 25, 30, 20, 25, 27 would be right there. All right, so to clarify what I've done here, it took me a minute myself to, you know, figure this out and I'm still not even sure if it'll be perfect. Uh, in theory, it should be. But uh, so anyway, I got my measurement from long to short and then I cut me a piece of straight pipe of this two and seven eighths and I laid it right here 
and then I measured from this pipe to to the edge of this right here that way I knew how much to add for my saddle because this is going to be coped right kind of like this general vicinity it's gonna be like this so so I laid my piece of pipe here and I measured over and I come up with three quarters of an inch roughly that's the part that I'm not sure about so then three quarters on this end three quarters on that end that's an inch and a half so I took 150 and a quarter plus an inch and a half and then that's what I made my that's what I made my measurement and to make sure that because with pipe it's difficult in a chop saw to make sure that it's long story short I found out how long this distance was and I eyeballed it to the side of the chop saw that I could see so now what I'm gonna do is measure three quarters right here three quarters and then three quarters and the same on this end and now I will literally eyeball this so I want something along these lines right here and do the same over here something along these lines and when I say something along these lines is I'm most concerned with this measurement because I want this to be touching our piece of our gate or uh, end of our gate and that's my measurement I need and this other part so you can even tilt it up like this and get a even more of an idea of what you need the rest of it will literally just kind of be fitting it with a grinder. It's all in the Vanessa. Vanessa eyeball. Eyeball situation. So. You got a picture piece of two and seven eighths at an angle. See, not just up and down. Last down there, I was like, oh, piece of seven eighths like this, two and seven eighths like this. No, it's like this. So it's like, that's what's so weird about all this. And that's why you just gotta feel it with a grinder, you know? Eyeball it, do a little sanding, grinding, set it, test it. Sanding, grinding, test it. So now I'm gonna get my torch and cope these out and grind a little bit and then take my piece of straight pipe over here and use it as a tester like so it'll end up being like that there
Look at how good of a fit that's not. <laughs> no, but I'm gonna do some grinding real quick so you can tell here for sure. Or I might take a, might take a torch to it one time. Yeah, I'm gonna take a torch and notch these off a little bit. Yeah, I'll go ahead and take a grinder. A grinder tear. Come on, boys, come on. Come on, boys, come on down town, boys. Ooh, looky there, boys. Look at there. Not too shabby. My advice for this week is when it comes to this smaller pipe and fence work, don't be afraid to use your eyeball. Even though I used the center finder, the flange wizard center finder on this project here, I don't always do that when it comes to this small pipe, but I was really trying to get this first piece to fit good. So I was just being really technical, but you don't have to use the center finder on this smaller stuff. I, a lot of times I will literally just make a mark on top of the pipe and then I'll go to the other end, like don't move the pipe, go to the other end of the pipe, and then make a mark on the top. And sometimes I'll stand down there, eye level with the end of the pipe, the pipe's running this way, and I will make a mark at the top of the pipe and on the bottom, and then I'll go to the other side and do the same thing. And you can even do on your sides too, and get rough quarters this way. Look who it is. How come every time I try to film a video, you wanna come in here and interrupt everything? I don't understand. Have mercy, Karen. I don't even know where I was at. Eyeball, utilize your eyeball. I think that's one of the things that I like about pipe work in general is if you've seen any of the fence videos that I've done when it comes to laying out a top rail or laying out a fence, I say use your eyeball a lot because with pipe, I mean, it's rounded so you can get away with your eyeball because at the end of the day, as long as it looks decent and looks fluent, you're doing good. I mean, when it comes to fitting pipe, obviously you wanna, you know, you want it to fit good so you can weld it easier, but use your eyeball, go with your gut when it comes to, to fitting the saddle anywhere, you know, with a grinder like I did here uh, on this fence and, uh, or on this gate. I'm having a hard time focusing with this cap. Come back and see us next week to finish this gate. I'm excited to share the rest of this gate project with you. Thank you all for watching and remember, Learn something every day.
Karen, what do you want? How come every time I try to film something, you want to come in here and meow? She's so needy. Say hi, Karen. Say bye, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.